All right, let's get started. Hey guys, this is Scott and Wendy, and we are raising an archer. This is the rodeo episode, isn't it, Wendy? It is, and let's be clear, that is the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Archery Competition. And it is for just Texas Texas 4-H and FFF... <laughs> Texas 4-H <laughs> and FF. Let me just run members. this episode tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's been a long week for me being here at Nationals, <laughs> Adult Nationals. And also, we need to make sure everyone knows that the time and date has changed from previous years. It is no longer held during the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We are having this competition months before the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo because the rodeo is normally in March, February, March, that area. And this is going to be in October. We are about six weeks away probably from this competition. It will be October 28th and 29th of this year. So like she said, it's coming up pretty right? quick. And yeah, and it's going to be at the NRG Center. And that's part of the reason why they did October was when they were looking at all the dates. Last year's wasn't actually during the rodeo. I think it was a week or two beforehand. They did the tournament and then they ended up they tear, tore it down immediately to get it ready for something else for the actual rodeo. Right. So whenever we were there, the uh, barbecue cook-off was about to start going on. So they were looking at different dates. They, were, they looked in January and February. And in the archery community, those are really tough weekends to try to schedule an archery tournament. So they went ahead and looked at, hey, what would be a good time? And October really is a good time for kicking off the indoor season because that's when everything's just starting to ramp up. So what a great way to start it is with the with the rodeo, which will be the lar I believe it'll be the largest youth tournament in Texas, maybe in the country. Uh, there are there are a lot of open spots. They've made sure they were trying not to limit it any of the numbers. So they have a uh, seven hundred and twenty spots available. Right, because in the past it's been uh, I want to say like in a weekend at uh, the last year at least, and like one weekend it filled up. And so archers were left out. And uh, once you once registration was filled, that was it. There weren't any more uh, spots available. So now they've got uh, opening it up on October 28th and 29th. They've got preliminary rounds on uh, Saturday at 8 a.m. and then 1 p.m. And then they have an additional Sunday, 8 a.m. as well, before the finals at 1 p.m. Yeah, and I was about to say, they're bringing back the finals. And how the finals are going to work is uh, the the juniors are going to shoot all the way through their, their, their ranking. So it'll be the top eight that move, that go through a bracketing system, which will go all the way through their gold medal match. The seniors will do the exact same thing until they get to the gold medal match because the gold medal match will be at 1 p. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, the Yeah, I'm sorry. They don't have a final time yet for the finals, but once they get to the gold medal match, then the gold medal matches will be shot live on a platform with live scoring on the screen, all that good stuff that Wendy and I love to do. Entries are $75 per archer. Uh, they opened up on September 1st. So just a few days ago, they opened up and they will close entries on October 24th. And the rodeo was was one of our favorite shoots of the year because, of course, because we got to do live coverage of it. And so we set up cameras, we set up all the live stuff. And I think the best part for us, you know, getting to see the archers out there shooting and everything. But the best part for us was when we got to do some interviews with all those youth and we had youth yeah, sitting. Yeah, that's pretty fun. And we had youth sitting there with us, and they were they were doing some of the live broadcast with us, explaining what was going on and how the scoring was going to go. So this this event is going to be just as good, if not better, than last year or earlier this year. <laughs> <laughs> that feels weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're doing this shoot twice this year, <laughs> even though it kind of counts for the 2024. Uh, rodeo, but it is being done this year. So how registration is going to work? 
you're going to go to hlsr.com slash archery. That's going to take you to a registration page that's on Eyes on Score. You'll fill out all your information there and pay your $75 and you'll be entered. The one thing that will happen once it closes, these are the, this information is sent to the, extensions, the extension offices and they will approve who gets to shoot and who doesn't. So I'm mentioning that because I know that all the extensions offices have certain things that you have to follow to be able to be eligible for a 4-H shoot. This one's going to follow the same type of rules for registration or eligibility, I guess is the right word, to, to shoot a competition. Speaking of rules, rules are going to be a little different than a 4-H shoot. It's going to fall more in line with USA archery when it comes to arrow size. It's going to be a 9.3 um, uh, shaft, which is a normal 23 arrow, and the point will be 9.4, so the, the point can be just a hair bigger, and we're going to be using the, um, uh, what do they call them, the little tools to be able to, that, that come from USA Archery to measure those those items. The other one is, is I believe, and I can't really speak to it, I know that there's a lot of discussion around, can you have a plunger or not for bare bow? In 4-H, you're, you're not allowed to have a plunger, but in USA Archery, you are. And so there's a discussion right now to uh, allow plungers to be a part of one of, you know, part of a bare bow. <clears throat> 4-H is, a, um, is considered a um, grassroots type of organization. They want to be able to bring in archers, you know, and, and they don't have to have all this equipment, but... For the rodeo, you know, they're giving money away. It's not really a grassroots type of competition. It becomes a very competitive competition, and so that's that's why that discussion's on the table right now. Uh, Wendy, go ahead and tell us. Do you what was what was the feel? What was your favorite part of the rodeo? Well, I don't think I really had a favorite part. It was uh, it was just a new experience for us to be doing the live broadcast of the rodeo. We have shot the rodeo before. And uh, we have fun with it. And uh, so it was just a completely new experience of being able to be there and doing the live broadcast of the shoot. So what's, what is the finals venue going to look like when it comes to gold medal match? Um, I don't know if Wendy knows all the details, but I'll, uh, what does our normal finals venue look like when we do a gold medal match? We have two, uh, and it's not a podium, it's two Platform. uh, platforms. Yep. And so they're side by side, and uh, there are just two targets up. I'm thinking, uh, because of the way we do it at the shop, we've got two banners off to the side. So it kind of narrows the um, the uh, area that you're going to be. So like the field of play, the lanes, it narrows it down to two. And then also it hides the blinds and it makes it kind of like a blind where we have people behind there who are scoring and pulling arrows and the judges as well. Uh, so they can't be seen. And then um, people will be running back and forth, not running, running, but will be called runners and who will be bringing the arrows back and forth. Uh, we do normally have a spotter who is spotting and calling out preliminary scores as uh, the arrows hit the target. And uh, so it just makes it, it, it puts a little more pressure on the archers. Yeah, we, we leave them on the platform. They don't go down and score. <laughs> um, well, the, each one of the archers will have two people that they pick. Uh, maybe, uh, usually the runners, we just someone that we get to run arrows back and forth. Or, or like you said, they call them runners, they walk. Um, we have, they, yeah. they, they, they have a coach. Safety. Yeah, <laughs> safety. They have a coach that will stand behind them and give them encouragement or they have any questions while they're waiting there or if they you know the coach like okay settle down things like that and then there's also an agent that they'll have is down there's kind of your representative so that they'll verify the score so the the judges will walk out walk over with the agents we'll have one judge that scores one judge that writes it down and then we'll have the two agents verify those scores to make sure that there's they're okay with those calls once that's done yep scores, accountability yep scores are the flipped on the flip chart the scores are updated because at that point we know what the exact you know what the the the, 
the, what the arrows were called because some of them, even though we've got really good binoculars, we really can't tell sometimes if it touched the line or not. We don't have that $7,500 flashlight that Sean Harrigan has. Right? So. <laughs> <laughs> now, he was there last year working Eyes on Score, uh, the... The app where it was online scoring, uh, live scoring. Uh, now, I don't know if he will be judging or if he's doing live scoring again. But if not, we may have to borrow that $7,500 flashlight. So, so Sean is <laughs> judging. And, okay. And since you're speaking of judges, um, I haven't got final confirmation for it. But I believe that they're going to go ahead and bring in some USA Archery judges to run the event as well as the help of the... Um, the support team that they bring in for scoring. I know that they like to have everybody participate, but we're going to go ahead and have some judges there that are that are around to answer questions quickly and easily if there is something that needs to be answered um, during right. during the shoot. Any questionable arrow calls? Those that are those line and uh, those that are on the line. Those jar liquors. The jar liquors feel like I need to be like, arr, arr. <laughs> Hey, Scott, you know what would make archery like a hundred times better than it already is? What, Wendy? If there was some kind of app I could have on my phone and see my kids' scores as they're shooting. Eyes on Score is the app you're looking for. <gasps> it has live scoring. It has registration for that tournament. And guess what? What? It's free. Oh, yeah. Go to www.eyesonscore.com and start doing live scoring. A couple things new this year is I believe that there'll be judges. <laughs> so I don't want to say on here, yes, we'll have okay, judges. Okay, so a, poss a few possible, possible new things. Possible, thank you. A couple possible new things. <laughs> judges, we're going to have a DOS. It may or may not happen. Uh, yep. So we'll, we're going to run it. I, I say I keep saying we. I, I'm not really a part of this. I'm just, you know, Wendy and I just like to like to play the part of being a part of it. It's really not us. We're just we're just there as advisors if they have questions and things like that. But um, I believe that judges will be a part of it. The venue, the 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 final venue is coming back. When you're picking times, if you don't want to if you want to shoot on Saturday but don't want to come back on Sunday because you only want to come one day that means you need to sign up early and get on the Sunday time because there's a qualifier on Sunday and if you are in the top eight guess what at one o'clock you're moving on if you're on Saturday or if you shoot on Saturday and you're in the top eight then you're gonna have to come back and you won't know that unfortunately until the Sunday a.m. time is done you may have a good idea when you're watching the scores, if you're going to have to go up there or not, they weren't planning on doing a qualifying round on Sunday, but it interfered with some other 4-H events that were going on at the time. So they, they had to go ahead and open up another slot so that others could participate. Oh, I forgot to mention the one thing that I am adding to the, the finals venue uh, is we're going to add TVs, so we're going to have cameras on the targets. We're going to have monitors in front of the archers so that they can see very quickly um, what's going on down there because you only have 20 seconds or less to shoot when you're up on that stage. You'll get 20 seconds. If that person shoots in 10 seconds, guess what? It flips over to you, and you've got 20 seconds. I'm So it is fast-paced when shooting those arrows. So we wanted to give them the ability to be able to see what's going on down there. Also is going to add a I little more stress. I knew we were stress. trying that out at the shop. I knew we were trying that out in the shop in a couple of weeks, but I didn't know if it was for sure yet. I thought that was another one of those possibly. No, no, that one's <laughs> happening. That one's happening. Okay. I, I want that to happen because I think it also adds another le level of stress because now, guess what? You can see your opponent's target too <laughs> when you're up on the stage. So you'll know, you'll know exactly. If you choose to look at yeah. their monitor. <laughs> well, I've got some big monitors, so it's going to be hard not to miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh when somebody accidentally shoots it. How would they shoot it? It's going to be right in front. <laughs> hey, when they're, yes, when they're loading an arrow, you know, you got the three meter lines, so you could easily yep. shoot a monitor. <laughs> I know they're looking at 
ways of trying to get projectors. Another possibility that they're trying to do is come up with TVs and, and um, overhead projectors to be able to have live scoring going so that you can see. If you can't get it on your phone, you'll be able to see it right there on the screen, see exactly where Man, everybody's Man, that at. makes me think about Vegas and seeing those being shot, the big, huge. <laughs> yeah. The, um, like, oops. <laughs> I don't believe Eyes on Score will have the bracketing done by then. So the bracketing is going to be manual. Uh, the the developers have gotten the okay. They've started working on developing the bracketing piece. I just don't think it's going to be ready to go by the time uh, the rodeo hits here in the next six weeks. That's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll during the uh, the actual shoot offs. We're going to have numbers on the bales so that archers can see exactly what the scores are. We're going to try to get them. We've got to get there's they have 60, 60 bales. So. Depending on on the shoot off and how many bills are being used, we've got to have enough of those little flip charts to be able to cover all of them. And but we're going to try to make that happen so that everybody can see exactly what's hey, going A&M, on. Hey A M, can we borrow your flip charts <laughs> again? <laughs> That's who I was going to be going to. I only have like <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I have twenty of them. <laughs> I'm probably going to order another twenty. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that too. We normally borrowed them from. Uh, for the shoots, the state shoots at the shop. So. Yeah. yeah, and if you put it in perspective, like every bale needs four. So I don't think we'll need, we'll, we won't be using 60 bales for the shoot-offs, but we'll still be using a lot of bales. And so we need, we're going to yeah. need um, a bunch of uh, those flip flip charts to be able to show the scores. And that does help with Right, what is it, exactly. eight times six? Yeah, and it's a... It's, so we'll it, be starting off with like 48? Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> there's Not 60 but it, close yeah yep so there's going to be eight divisions that are going to be shooting off um in each in senior and in junior so like for the finals there'll be eight because the seniors will be shooting off the gold match online so there's going to be eight matches that are going to be shot there's going to be yeah. match play we'll try to get that information out to everybody so for for genesis Barebow and for uh, recurve, it's going to be match play, compound. It's going to be points, and highest score right. moves on. Cumulative points. Yep. And I know that we were just about to end it, but Wendy, explain match points real quick because I think that that's going to be important because it, it can be confusing. So if if uh, whoever wins that match, they will get two points. So even if you had 30 points and somebody had 29, the person with 30 gets two points, 29 gets zero. Now, if you both tie, then you each get one point. So if you did not win that one, you get zero. And it goes up to the first person to reach six points. Or if you're tied after five, then you are... Um, you go into a one-arrow shoot-off. Closest to the X wins. And they haven't finalized how many ends during the shoot-off yet, so it it could be... That's first, a normal shoot-off. Yeah, first, <laughs> it could be the first person to five. And so after each end, the, number, the, the points start over. So if they, you know, for match plays, it, match play it's kind of cool because if you shoot, let's just say you shot really bad, you shot a 20, somebody else shot a 30, they got two points. The next round, you shoot a 21, and they shoot a... 20 you get two points doesn't it doesn't continue yep. on uh, so each time it starts over and then the first person to whatever that number is moves on to the next round if there's a tie it's a one arrow shoot off closest to the center all right well thanks everybody and we will see you guys at the rodeo and that is it for this episode of raising an archer